Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and it is time for another 4 on Friday collaboration with my friend Danny. This month we will each be creating four projects using stencils. I hope you'll stick around, see what I'm going to create, and find out how you can check out Danny's blog post for what she has made. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. If you're new to my channel or new to my four on Friday collaboration, let me tell you a little bit about it before we get started. Just about once a month, my friend Danny and I like to stop by and we each share four projects using the same tool, technique, or product. I participate here with a video on my YouTube channel and she participates with a post on her blog. Once you're done here today, make sure to click on her link in the description box below to go see what she has made this month. This month, we'll be using stencils for our projects. For most of my projects today, I plan on using some stencils that I recently bought from Amazon. I don't want to pay $6 a stencil when I'm just starting out and learning, so I got two packs of 25 and when I bought them they were about $11 each. I'll pop some pictures up here on screen. And then I will also link those products below if you want to go check them out. Now one thing I did notice when I received my stencils is that I think most of the stencils you get now for crafting are 6x6 six six, and that way they would fill you know, an A4 card front completely. But I did measure mine once I opened them and they are about 5 and 1 8 by 5 and 1 8 and that is on the outside edge. So depending upon the design, the image that you get to stencil might be smaller. But I think for me starting out, this is going to be just fine. As I start the process, I will let you know the products I am using for each of my projects today. And if I leave you with any question, whether it's about a product or just about the video in general, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! For card number one, I will be using this nautical stencil from set A. I will be inking that up with some sepia ink and using this brush from the Dollar Tree to do the inking. I also got out my Stampin' Up! Knight of Navy Stampin' Spot and I got out four little brads and cross my fingers I will not lose those before I need to use them. For my stamps today I got out a couple of the past paper pumpkin kits. On this first one I'll be using the little nautical icons and on the second one I'll be using this Thinking of You sentiment. For my papers, I got out a piece of craft card stock, a piece of dark blue, and a pattern paper from a recollections pad. I started by cutting all of my papers. The craft got cut and folded into a card base. The pattern paper, I cut a piece out of one of the planks that was three and a half inches wide by two and a quarter inches tall. And then for the navy blue, I just cut this so there would be a small border on the plank piece. So it was three and three quarters inches wide by two and a half inches tall. I will be using my stencil right on the front of my card. Now you'll notice that this does not fill left to right on the card, but I figured it out that if I centered the stencil, those rope images could then just be stenciled at each end of the card. I will be holding all of my stencils in place today with some scotch blue removable tape and I will be able to reuse this throughout most of the projects. I did pull in a scrap of white paper from my recycle bin and I just used this as I went along to kind of test how much ink I had on my brush and wipe off any excess if I thought I needed it. 
I then just stenciled through all of the openings in the stencil and every once in a while I would lift it up just to see how I was doing. Once I had that where I thought it looked nice, I then removed it from the front of the card and replaced it so I could get those ropes stenciled in. And luckily the pattern did line up so that was pretty easy. Here's a look at the finished stenciling. Now it's time to do the stamping. You might have noticed that I have my old paper pumpkin kits in these clear envelopes. If you're interested in finding out how I store my old kits, I will link that video in the description box below. Since the sentiment that I'm gonna be using today is pretty little compared to the size of the pattern paper, I am gonna be doing a little bit of decorating on this piece. So I pulled in three of the nautical icons from that Stampin' Up! set, and for this first one, it kind of reminds me of water. I'm gonna stamp that off twice on my scrap of paper before I bring it to the bottom of my pattern paper piece. I just continue this until I have a border all the way across. Next, I brought in the sand dollar image and I will be inking this up with sepia ink. Now, I wasn't sure how strong I wanted it when I stamped on my pattern paper piece, so I did test it off to that scrap on the side and I decided to stamp it off once and then bring it to my sentiment block. This next image, I think it might be coral. I'm not 100% sure. Let me know below if you do know, but I inked this one up with the Knight of Navy ink, stamped it off once on the scrap of paper, and then brought it over to my sentiment block. This way I had lots of different shades and colors, and it just brought a little bit of extra fun to this piece. Last thing that I'll be stamping on this piece is the sentiment, which is thinking of you. I will be stamping this in full strength, Knight of Navy, and this card is actually for my friend Danny's There's a Stamp for That Challenge group on Facebook. If you want to go check out the challenge group, I will link it in the description box below. But for this latest challenge, you can create something with a mermaid or something about thinking of you. I decided while I had my Sizzix mat out that I would go ahead and pierce the holes for my brads. I do want to tack down my sentiment to the blue border just to hold that in place and I made sure not to get any adhesive in the corners just so I'm not pushing my piercer through adhesive because that does kind of gum it up. One of the great things about this pad is not only is it great for stamping when you're stamps don't have that rubber pad behind it but you can also use it for piercing. What I did was just put four holes, one in each corner for my brads. Once those were pierced, I then brought in my brads and put those in place. Now that my focal point was ready, it was time to get it put on the card front. I wanted to pop it up a little bit, so I brought in a sheet of fun foam and cut a scrap that was just a little bit smaller than the piece itself. I adhered this to my focal point, and then I placed that kind of skewed on the card front. And here's a look at the finished card. As soon as I saw this number stencil in my set, I knew that I wanted to make a back to school card. I will be doing an embossed resist technique for this, so I got out my Versamark ink and my Detail Clear embossing powder. For my focal point, I'll be using this Doodlebug Designs Schoolboy stamp set with corresponding dies, and I'll be doing just a little bit of coloring, so I got out my Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens, along with three inks from Gina K Designs. I was just going with the primary colors here. I also got out a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock, a white top fold card base, and a scrap of black cardstock. Before I start to ink up my paper, I did go ahead and prep my cardstock with my embossing buddy. This way when I put the powder on later, it will only stick to where I need it. I got back out those couple little pieces of scotch blue removable tape and adhered my cardstock to my stencil. Once that was in place, I opened up my Versamark ink and I started smooshing that, if that's a technical term, 
all across the front. Now I did find that you have to smoosh this pretty hard, so I would press it and kind of twist it. Every once in a while I would lift up the stencil to see how I was doing. And once I thought I had some good coverage on there, I went ahead and removed the stencil, got out that embossing powder, and poured it over the front of the cardstock. I did make sure that I covered it very well going back and getting any spots I missed and once I had tapped off all of the excess I brought in my heat tool and set that powder. Because of the mount covered this did take a little bit of extra time and I made sure to heat from the back and the front so there wasn't too much warping. I trimmed this piece down to three and a quarter inches wide by four and a half inches tall. Then I got out that scrap of black cardstock and I cut it so it was three and a half inches wide by four and three quarters inches tall. Now it's time to do the ink blending. I got out my blending brushes, the Gina K Designs inks, that scrap of white paper to the right so I can do a little testing, and then I started blending. I blended it so I had red in the upper left hand corner, moving to yellow, and then down to blue in the bottom right. Now I did go back in with the colors just so I had a nice smooth flow. You'll notice that when the colors ended up meeting, they did start to make an orange and a green, so you almost had that whole rainbow effect. You'll see here too that I'm using that post-it note underneath my fingers so I don't get inky fingers and then transfer it onto my card where I don't want it. Once I was happy with my blend, I got out a piece of paper towel and I went in and wiped off the ink that was just sitting on top of the clear embossing powder. You'll notice now how those numbers stand out just a little bit more. I got out my Hero Arts Infinity Dies nesting rectangles for my focal point. I chose a size that I wanted for my image and my sentiment, and then I chose one size bigger to make a mat out of black cardstock. I will be using the light bulb and the You're So Bright sentiment from the stamp set. Because I do want to get good placement on this and be able to stamp twice if needed, I did pull out my Misty. I arranged the stamps on there where I thought that they would look nice and then I picked those up with the door. Now because I do want to make sure everything looks straight and the words look okay, I did pull in a post-it note just to test the placement. I inked up my stamps, stamped it onto the post-it note, and I thought it looked okay, so I decided to go ahead and stamp it on my Bristol Smooth cardstock. Now good thing I was using my Misty, because the first time I stamped it, it wasn't quite as dark as I would like, so I inked it up and stamped it again. While I still had my stamps in place, I brought in another little scrap of Bristol Smooth cardstock and I stamped the image one more time. I will be die cutting this light bulb later and popping it up off the focal point. I brought back in my yellow blender brush and I used the ink that was left on there just to add a little bit of light emanating from the light bulb. Next, I got out the coordinating die set and I aligned my light bulb die on that second copy that I had stamped. Once again, I'm holding this in place with that scotch blue removable tape while I die cut it. To finish getting all of the elements ready, I brought in my zig markers and I added a little bit of gray to the bottom of my light bulb and blended that out with the colorless blender. Now it was time to start putting the card together. The first thing I did was matte the inked piece with the larger piece of black cardstock, and then this got adhered flat down in the center of the card base. Next, I matted the sentiment piece with the smaller piece of black cardstock, and then I got out some scraps of Stampin' Up! Dimensionals and put some foam strips around the outside of this. I just thought popping this up off the card would be a good idea. Once that was in place, I pulled out some mini dimensionals, added a couple to the back of my die cut light bulb, and then placed that onto my focal point over the light bulb that was already stamped. This was when I decided I needed a little bit more color on my image. So I pulled in a red zig marker and I added just a little bit of red to the heart in the filament of the light bulb. And here's a look at the finished card.
For card number three, I will be using the Star Stencil from Set A, two Distress Oxide inks, and for my papers, I got out a card base and a piece of Strathmore Bristol Smooth for blending. For my stamp set, I got out these United States, which is an old paper tray ink set. I also pulled out my large United States stencil from die cuts with a view. My card today will focus on Iowa and Nebraska. I grew up in Iowa and most of my family still lives there and I currently live in Nebraska. So I thought I would make a card that I could send to a family member. I set my stencil so I could highlight those and then I just blended that blue ink right around those two states. Next, I got out my Creative Memories Wavy Trimmer and a piece of folded up typing paper and I cut a wave on the top of this paper. I'm going to be using this as a mask on my final card. I will say though, if I had to do it over again, I probably would have left this step out. The stencil will not fill the card all the way across, but the good thing is with this one, I can just turn it so it's kind of at a diagonal and then I taped it in place. Then I brought in my piece of copy paper and I placed that so it would be just a little bit above the two states that I highlighted and I also taped this on the back using some scotch blue removable tape. Then I got out my blender brush and I just concentrated my ink above where that wavy line was trying to fill in the stars completely. Once I was done with the top section, I turned it around and I inked the bottom section as well. Once I pulled the stencil and the paper back to reveal the pattern, I wasn't too thrilled with it. I think it would have looked better if there would have been more inked area. So I decided that I would trim off the top and bottom and just change my card layout a little bit. So I cut one inch off the top and bottom and then I got out a piece of red cardstock and I cut a mat that was gonna be just slightly taller than my inked states piece. I matted that blue inked piece with the red cardstock and then I pulled out my card base and I adhered the star strips to the top and bottom of the card front. Before I can put my inked piece onto the card though, I need to do just a little bit of stamping. From the stamp set, I'm going to use this sentiment that says I keep you in my heart so you're never far away and the kind of little curly Q heart image. Now I did get out my Misty so I could get pretty exact placement on this. I placed both of those stamps and I have to say that this heart, it pretty much is the distance between my hometown and where I currently live so that was handy. These two stamps I used VersaFine Onyx Black ink. I decided to bring in a little more red and this stamp set comes with a teeny tiny heart so I wanted to put a heart near my hometown and where I currently live. I stamped this in that same red ink that I inked the stars with. I wanted this piece to pop up off the card a little bit, so I used a scrap of fun foam between the two layers. To finish the card off and to cover up a couple little ink spots that I didn't mean to have on the card, I pulled in some blue gems and added three of those to the front. And here's a look at the final card. For my fourth and final card today, I will be using this stencil from set A. I like the butterflies here on the left. I got out a couple different Gina K Designs ink spots. I wasn't sure yet which I wanted to use. For this sentiment, I will be using Pretty Pink Posh's Simple Sayings Courage stamp set. I got out some fishtail nesting dies from My Favorite Things. For my pattern papers, I chose three pieces from this backyard table 6x6 pad and I also got out a scrap of vellum. And finally for this card, I got out this Spellbinders Butterfly die set. The first thing that I'm going to do for this card is ink my butterflies on a piece of pink and white wood grain paper. 
I start with the lighter color ink to see first if that will work. This is the Dusty Rose and it does actually end up working so I don't need the other ink spot. The post-it note serves a couple purposes. First of all, it keeps me from getting into the other design on this stencil. And then secondly, if I need a place to wipe off any excess ink, then I have that as well. This inked piece then gets die cut with one of those fishtails and I kept it so the butterflies were to the left of this. Once I had that die cut, I got out the larger fishtail and I cut one of those from that pink ombre paper. Before I put my cuddle bug away, I got out my two butterflies and I die cut those as well. The butterfly got die cut from the ombre paper and the detailed butterfly got cut from vellum. Next, I adhered a piece of butterfly pattern paper that filled the entire card front. Then I put the two fishtail pieces together and I almost put that on the card, but then I remembered, wait, stop the presses, I forgot my sentiment. So I got out my stamp mat, the sentiment, and a basic gray ink spot from Stampin' Up! and I got that sentiment stamped in the bottom center of my fishtail. And now I could continue to put my card together. The fishtail piece just got adhered in the center of the card front, and then I got out some mini glue dots to adhere my vellum butterfly to the ombre one. Once I had those together, I lifted the wings up a little bit for some more dimension, and then I got out some dimensionals to adhere my butterfly to the card front. Now I'm not quite done because you know I need a little bit of sparkle, so to add the sparkle and to hide the glue dots in the center of the butterfly, I got out some clear gems. I placed five of the smallest ones down the center of the butterfly, and then I went ahead and placed three more just randomly on the card front. And here is a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made today's cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go visit Danny's blog post. It's linked below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.